The purpose of this video is to provide an introduction to vaccines and vaccinology. The immunology concepts that will be covered in this video include protecting, detect and recognize, and remembering. There are three learning objectives that uh, go along with this video. First, uh, to describe the five different types of vaccines and give specific examples of each. Second, compare and contrast how each type of vaccine is generated. And third, describe the risks associated with the use of live attenuated vaccines. Now let's start with what the purpose of vaccinations is. First, it's to generate a protective immune response against an organism that can cause a severe illness, disability, or death by administering a safe vaccine uh, prior to being exposed to, that, uh, to those organisms. Second, by preventing life-threatening infectious diseases, vaccination is estimated to avert two to three million deaths per year worldwide. Now, there's some important terminology that you need to get uh, as we begin this video. First, uh, vaccine antigens. The antigen is the molecule, uh, the protein or the carbohydrate in the vaccine that an antibody response should be generated against. Now, some vaccines will have multiple antigens in them. Second uh, is adjuvant. Uh, an adjuvant is a substance that is non that non-specifically activates the immune system, and it is added to vaccines to enhance the immune response. Third is uh, vaccine titer, which is a measure of the amount of antibody that is made to a vaccine antigen. Now, as I mentioned to begin with, there are five different types of vaccines. These include vaccines that are inactivated or killed, vaccines that are toxoids, which are just inactivated toxins, third are subunit vaccines, fourth conjugated vaccines, and fifth live attenuated vaccines. We're going to go through each one of these in succession. So to begin with, we'll talk about inactivated or killed vaccines. Examples of these types of vaccines include the uh, polio vaccine that is injected, the IPV vaccine, the hepatitis A vaccine, and the rabies vaccine. These vaccines are made by inactivating the whole pathogen by heat or by chemical inactivation with uh, chemicals such as formaldehyde. The advantages of these types of vaccines is that they're relatively easy to generate, so you can make a new vaccine uh, or a new formulation of a vaccine very quickly. And they're also relatively safe because there's no risk of the virus or the pathogen being reactivated. The second type of vaccine are toxoid vaccines. These are vaccines in which the toxin uh, is inactivated and then used as the vaccine antigen. Now, examples of these types of vaccines are the tetanus vaccine and the diphtheria vaccine. Now, some bacterial diseases are not caused directly by the bacteria themselves, but instead are caused by the toxin that is made by the bacteria. The classic example of this is the tetanospasmin uh, toxin, which is a neurotoxin that's made by Clostridium tetani and causes the disease tetanus. Now, to the right, you see a classic uh, painting of a uh, patient who is dying of tetanus, and you see the, the tetany that occurs in this patient. The epistotonus, which occurs uh, and causes the arching of the back, and the uh, rhesus sardonicus, which is the grin that takes place with contraction of the facial mus muscles. Now, these toxoid vaccines are made by isolating a large amount of toxin from the organism and then inactivating that toxin with either heat or chemical treatment uh, with chemicals such as formalin. Now, um, these types of vaccines typically require intermittent boosters to main maintain a protective antibody level. So in the case of tetanus, boosters are typically given uh, approximately every 10 years. The third type of vaccine are subunit vaccines. The examples of these types of vaccines are the hepatitis B vaccine, the human papillomavirus vaccine, uh, the pertussis vaccine, the uh, influenza vaccine that's given by injection, the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, and the meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine. Now, these vaccines are made by isolating uh, the specific component uh, of a pathogen that you want to generate an antibody response to. Now, this may be a protein or it may be a carbohydrate. In many cases, in order to increase the response to uh, this uh, component, it is mixed with an adjuvant, which again causes a non-specific activation of the immune system and increases the immune response. 
Now, two examples of these subunit vaccines include the hepatitis B vaccine, which is generated uh, to a uh, portion of the hepatitis B surface antigen, which is made as a recombinant protein in yeast. And this recombinant protein is uh, mixed with adjuvant and given uh, as an injection. The second example is the pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, where polysaccharides or carbohydrates from the outer capsule of 23 different serotypes of streptococcus pneumonia are isolated and given as the vaccine antigen. Now, the fourth type of vaccine are conjugated vaccines. Examples of these types of vaccines are the Haemophilus influenza vaccine, the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and the meningococcal conjugate vaccine. These vaccines, as you will note, are intended to prevent infections with encapsulated organisms that are thickly coated in polysaccharides or carbohydrates. Some patients, uh, oftentimes infants and some adults, don't make good responses to just purified carbohydrate, like uh, the types of antigens found in the old-fashioned uh, pneumococcal vaccine, also known as the pneumovax, or the meningococcal vaccine. So to increase those, the immune response to uh, these carbohydrates, you can conjugate the carbohydrate to a protein. And in many cases, uh, the, the proteins that are used as the uh, carrier conjugates for these conjugate vaccines are either the tetanus toxoid or the diphtheria toxoid. And in fact, the diphtheria toxoid is the one that is used most frequently. As you can see, on the one hand, you have carbohydrate. On, this, on the other hand, you have the toxoid, and you uh, covalently link those together, and that becomes the conjugate vac vaccine. The last vaccine that we will discuss is uh, live attenuated vaccines. Now, examples of these types of vaccines include the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, or the MMR vaccine, the varicella vaccine, or the chickenpox vaccine, the rotavirus vaccine, the influenza virus vaccine, uh, the one that you uh, in inhale in your nose, the oral polio vaccine, the yellow fever vaccine, and a vaccine known as Bacille calmet garin which is, uh, or the BCG vaccine, uh, which we'll discuss more in a moment. Now, these vaccines consist of live attenuated organisms that are either injected, uh, like the MMR vaccine, the varicella, or the BCG vaccine, or they're ingested, like the rotavirus or uh, oral polio vaccine, which are given by mouth, or they're sprayed into the nose like the uh, influenza vaccine uh, that is given as a nasal spray. These live attenuated vaccines contain live pathogens that are attenuated by growing these pathogens in cells from other, other species, species, such as fertilized chick embryos. Over time, the pathogen will mutate to grow better in the cells from that, from that animal, and in doing so, they grow less well in human cells. And they become uh, less able to grow and divide in, uh, inside humans. Now, these pathogens that have mutated, even though they're not able to uh, uh, cause disease in humans, they're still recognized by the human immune system, and it allows the immune system to make a prote protective antibody response against these pathogens. Now, the problem with live attenuated vaccines is that if the immune system is compromised in some way, so in patients who have immune deficiency diseases, patients who may be undergoing cancer chemotherapy, or patients who've undergone bone marrow transplant, these attenuated uh, pathogens may still cause disease because they are still able to infect and divide to at least a small degree uh, in human cells. The other thing that can happen in, uh, with live attenuated vaccines is that they can revert to, a more, to, to their wild type virulent form. And this has been well described in the oral polio vaccine in which certain strains of the oral, oral polio vaccine can revert just a few mutations that are required to attenuate those viruses. And this can occur fairly quickly uh, within just weeks of uh, take, taking the oral polio vaccine. And the, the virus uh, infects uh, cells that line the, the gut, so gut mucosa cells, and uh, over time it will, it will back mutate so that it is able to grow well in human cells, and in doing so it reverts to a more wild type form and can cause 
uh, polio disease uh, in humans, and there are cases of vaccine-associated polio that occur each year. The last live attenuated, attenuated vaccine that's worth mentioning is the BCG vaccine. This vaccine is not a virus, it's actually a bacterium. And this is a mycobacterium. It is a live attenuated mycobacterium bovis that causes bovine tuberculosis. And this vaccine is used to immunize patients uh, to try and prevent tuberculosis. It's not used in the United States. Um, it has variable efficacy, but it is used in many other countries in the world. And um, it can cause a disseminated tuberculosis-like illness in some patients who've, who have a compromised immune system. And <clears throat> so it's worth knowing about because it is used so broadly in other areas of the world. Now, the key takeaway points from this video are that there are five different kinds of vaccines, including inactivated or killed vaccines, toxoid vaccines, subunit vaccines, conjugate vaccines, and live attenuated vaccines. The second takeaway point from this video is that because live attenuated vaccines contain live organism that is not activated, they have the potential to cause disease directly in individuals who, who have compromised immune systems, or they have the ability in some cases to revert to a wild type uh, pathogen that can cause uh, disease. 